All right, this is Nick Metropolis coming out at you from the Lou. Uh, we're going to do a quick tutorial video on how to start our Google Classroom. And then we're going to kind of brainstorm and think of some ideas uh, for how we could actually apply or use Google Classroom that's where it's going to actually, we're actually going to gain something from it as a teacher and, a, and our students are, or is it just going to be a new, a new neat technology? So we're gonna, I'm going to show you how I use it in my classroom and try to, maybe give you some ideas and just talk about honestly I think it's a really great technology and program that could really help us reach out better communicate with our students and be more efficient and give a lot better feedback okay so first things first we gotta figure out how to even get on this Google Classroom well before you even start you have to be with a school district it's not optional the students have to have um, well they should have student uh, accounts through the school district and you as a teacher have to have a teacher account when then also your administration will have to verify it. So one thing I did learn is that uh, you may have to have your administrator, your principal or assistant principal or somebody in your school actually call uh, and contact Google to say that you're cleared by the district to, to use Google Classroom. People that are not teachers can't use Google Classroom, only students can and teachers, which is great because it keeps it uh, professional and keeps it in a, our world separate from uh, maybe more of just social media. All right. So how do I sign up for Google Classroom? Well, you can see on my right-hand corner, I'm at metropolis at parkwayschools.net. Uh, that's my email address, and that's my school account. So if you go to the top left-hand corner where it says Apps, you click App, and it's going to come up. You're going to go to what's called the App Store. So here's the Web Store, and you can see some of my apps are Bubble Us, and I already have it on there, but I just want to walk you through on how to actually get the Google Classroom, okay? So all you do is type in Google Classroom. Okay. And if you hit search, boom, it's going to pop up. And then you would just click where it says add Chrome right here. But mine's asked me to rate it. And I, I do actually like it. So let's give it, a, let's give it a high rating. Okay. So now we've done that. Now there's a lot of other great apps in Google Store, um, some that... I, I've talked about with other teachers is Bubble Loss if you want a mind map um, and Scantacity, uh, Screentacity is great if you want to make flip videos. I actually don't use it. I use a, a microphone and, and use um, uh, a different program. However, it's free and it's just an app and you don't even need a microphone or a headset. You can just talk directly to the computer. So I've had kids actually make some flip videos to teach us. Okay, so now I'm into Google Classroom. It's going to look like this. Now you hit the plus key and then you can join a class or create a class as it's going to ask you if you're a teacher or a student make sure before you get to this step that you make clear that you're a teacher and students make sure that you go in as students only if you go in as a teacher you may which i have i don't think you can usually do but if you did you would just be creating a class and it would you it wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to do much of anything but as a teacher you create it so we'll name the class something like american government Uh, and then the section, so I'll put uh, period four, for example. We'll just create that. And it's really this simple. It's just taking a second to process. Okay, so here we go. Oh, look at this. It even chose a patriotic template to uh, for the screen, which is great. It actually recognizes the American government. You can select right here where it says theme, and you can change the themes. This one automatically went to uh, the American flag, which is great because we're, we're learning about American government. But here's some other ones. I like you could color coordinate them. I've done, I actually do it by year, but you could do it by classes. You could do it by quadmesters. Maybe you go green for first quad or uh, semester, and then second semester could be blue. Whatever you want to do. So we're not going to do that. Okay, now you got to pay attention to the setup. It's pretty simplistic. But very effective. Right here it says stream. Show deleted items. This is a button I don't ever click over. Because what's great about that is you can see all the um, all the assignments you've given all the students for that class. And it'll lay, start laying them out. Um, and I'm not going to show you examples with students' names on it for confidential reasons. Uh, but it's great. So you can have 10 assignments they've done. And you can see what the kids have done and how many kids have turned it in, and it is amazing. So this is about as easy as it gets for getting kids to sign up for it. 
Um, I don't know why you would use the other way I'm going to talk about to get the kids to sign up. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, and, but uh, the way I'm going to show you is very efficient and quick, and it's about as easy as it gets. So what you would do is just project. What I do is I just project this screen, and as you can see right here under class code, that's the code. It's that easy. The kids can type in H fit five nine U G J A. And once they sign in under their school district email, if they try to sign on under their regular email or even a Gmail account, it's not going to work. You have to be a teacher and you have to be recognized with uh, Google and okayed by the district. So all they do is type this code in and bada boom, bada bing, they are in your classroom and it's that easy. Now, a more tedious way and a way I would not recommend is you, you could go to students like this. Uh, you could actually invite kids and you would have to look them up uh, with your districts. It should have all the kids' names. I'm not going to type names in because it could show you a real student's name, and I want to keep that uh, confidential. So, But let's say Sarah Smith is a student, and I type in Sarah Smith. It'll pull up her account for my school district, and I can invite her. And you could pull up all the kids you want and uh, in your classroom. Now, that's a very long, tedious way to do it. I, I, again, I recommend not doing that. So let's look at what we can do with this. So let's go back to stream. First of all, you want to set up the about. So there is a, there is a class tour if you want to take it, if you still have questions after the video. But if you click on about, you can title. So let's put the title of this class is American Government. Class description, I'm not going to sit here and type it out, but I could drop in the description I have uh, from my syllabus if I wanted to. So, you know, we will learn about the three branches uh, okay so a go of government and so on and so forth and so on room number so you can put your room number and then the Google Drive now this is cool if you save this you can upload stuff from your Google Drive uh, so if you put a bunch of documents in the Google Drive you can upload those documents and the kids can have access to them all the time so one thing you might want the kids to always have access to is their um, syllabus. So I like for example, you might give them one paper copy, but if if you've run into the issue that I have is you give the kids one copy and then they lose it. And then you give the kids two copies and they lose it and they keep losing it. Well, at some point you're going to have to say and I've had students who be like I'm not clear on something or when's this well, go look at the syllabus. Well, I lost my syllabus. Well, you can always go back to, to Google, and it, everything will just stay, will stay on the drive for the kids. Now, the biggest question is this. So announcement, well, first of all, let's start with the announcement. Announcement, you could say anything like, welcome to the class, and I can't, I cannot wait for another great semester. So you can make announcements and post that. There's not a real class, so doesn't matter so everybody can see this they can see when I posted it and I can communicate with the and the kids can comment so they can write back to you so you could if you can imagine ways you communicate with your class it's so quick it's so instantaneous it'll blow your mind so you could throw at the kids like hey guys don't forget or oh I forgot to tell you that um, the or to remind you the rough draft is due Wednesday or hey we're going on Band has tryouts on Thursday. Don't forget, you could do all kinds of things to help out, especially if, if you're like me, you may have freshmen in high school that really need those reminders and sophomores. And hopefully your upperclassmen are starting to get a little bit more organized. You can edit, delete, it's that easy. So now this is really where the beef of it is. And this is the assignment key. So the question I think most teachers have for me, and then the students are like, why are we using Google Classroom? I mean, why don't I just do it on paper? I've always done it on paper. Let's just keep it on paper. Or just give me the book and let's go for it. Well, that's a great question. Why would I actually use Google Classroom? And my answer is, if you brainstorm about it, there's about a billion things you could do electronically that really would be difficult or very time-consuming to do it through paper or just otherwise. So one thing is if you create a culture of Google Classroom and you, a culture of electronic paper a submission you won't need to actually give the kids papers after a while so after a couple of years of this someday the kids will just turn everything in electronically uh, also 
if you're like me, as a social studies teacher, I do not have the best handwriting. So I'm probably the prime candidate uh, for somebody that needs to type my uh, descriptions and my expectations out and my comments so the kids can really read. Because I've had kids come back to me and they say, Mr. Tropas, I don't understand what you're, you're, you're saying in this comment. Oh, okay, I can see why you got confused. So as teachers, we make mistakes. And, and I know that you know it's hard to read handwriting. I can't imagine what the kids are trying to read ours. So you could title the assignment. Now, some of the assignments I do are reflections are awesome. So let's think of a to think of one cool assignment. I'm just thinking off the top of my head right now. An American government. I might have them watch the uh, the Republican debate tonight. Debate on TV on television. So the the presidential watch the presidential Republican debate tonight. Okay, and I'm not going to sit here and do all this right now. So you could put that in the description here, or this is really great. If you hit the attachment, let's say you've done this assignment before and you've done it hard copy. And I'm not going to do this, but you would just select the file, or if you have it open on your desktop, you just take the file and you just drop that sucker in there, and you're done. Boom. Upload. Give it a second. It's going to upload the assignment or assignments. So you could have several steps or parts to this. You can get rid of a piece of it, and you could just keep going and going. You could have... You, so one thing I really like Google Classroom is working on a research paper, which is a multi-step uh, development and skill the kids really need to learn, especially the upperclassmen in high school to get them prepared for college, really thinking on their own. So what I'll do when I do research papers, I'll have several steps. I might have sources like how to an MLA website. Okay, so I could put stuff in the drive for them. I can have a link. So let's say they want to go to, I want them to go to a website like www.bubble us.com and then I can hit the link and then assign it and then the kids can click on the link check this out and it goes directly there the, the kids don't even need to cut and paste the website it goes directly to the website you set up for them um, one thing that really impresses me uh, when I'm creating an assignment we're going to have to create another assignment or actually I can go back and edit just go to the top right hit edit I can put in a YouTube video. So one thing that I enjoy doing is, so with the debates, for example, or in sociology, I teach sociology, I'll have a professor from Penn State YouTube video, or I could do a TED Talk uh, by a professor or a, a professional in that whatever ideas or whatever field their kids are talking about, and they watch a five or 10 minute video, and then they can have, write a reflection. So. You could have that could be outside of class too. Once you do it with them, you model it for homework. They could do reflections where they're interacting with, uh, watching famous people in their fields that are making it more relevant. And I got to tell you, that's pretty rigorous to write reflections and really clearly define your thoughts. So it really helps with the rigor and um, relevance aspect of learning. It's just a phenomenal tune. A tool, uh, a lot of things that I love about it. One thing is, nobody signed in. This is a fake class, but it'll say you how many kids are done, how many are not done. Tells you how many students you have. One thing I want you to make sure of is when you have the kids sign in, make sure that you physically walk around for personal experience and make sure every single kid is signed in in front of you, because one of the kids, some kids will be. Um, can be somewhat manipulative in this situation. They'd be like, I have no idea how to get on Google Classroom. You never told us. Well, make I, the first time you do it, I'd make sure they're all logged in and I'd have them actually do an assignment in class. I wouldn't jump straight into homework with them because they may get confused. Uh, but I have used it in so many ways in my classroom that I really like it. And I would love to hear your feedback on ways that you think that we could use it or I could use it in the future. Um, again, I want to thank you for your time today. And if you're, I have some other tutorial videos if you're interested, but some great resources. Google Apps has a lot of things. If you want to record the screens, the maps, you could apply that. 
you could have them do their projects in here. So if you want to have the kids make a flip video, you might create that as an assignment. Or if you do research or reflection or summaries, you can add readings if you just attach it. You don't have to have you have to make copies for the kids. You could just make one copy, upload it, and you're done. And they can all read it on their Chromebooks or their iPads. And one really great thing that um, I learned is that now there's a Google Classroom app for your iPhone. So you don't, the kids, a lot of my students have said, well, Mr. Tropolis, I don't have access to a computer. And in the past, they've said, well, you can go to the library or we have academic support periods where you can work on things. But also, I have some kids, believe it or not, and it's gotten really, uh, it's starting to blow my mind, that are doing their homework on their cell phones. Well, now they could use the Google app on the phone and they can actually get they can sit there at home uh turn off the tv hopefully and they can start typing on their phone if you have a kid that seems like almost every kid has a phone they're ubiquitous uh they're all over the place and i i just it really cuts down on the ex excuses from the kids and i also think it holds them more accountable and one thing i really like that i'm not going to show you because i do have students names on it is you can make direct comments, step-by-step -step comments on a research paper, a reflection, anything. And you can really make detailed comments. And it's pretty clear to read with the because you're typing it up. And then you could have them revise it and resend it again. One thing, though, is when they do submit it, make sure that they're clear that once they, they do their final submit submission, that um, it won't let them go back into it. So you're going to have to reopen everything in order, that for that, in order for that to happen. So I just want to thank you for coming today. I know it's just a quick, quick, quick uh, flip class on how to use Google Classroom, and I, I would love to hear from you guys. Please leave the feedback if you've got any ideas on how I could use uh, flip class more in my classroom as a social studies teacher. And I know all my other coworkers would appreciate suggestions in math, science, and the, uh, the arts. So thanks a lot, and have a great evening. Bye.